Hello and welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. I am here in my apartment in New York City and it is about 5.20 in the morning Eastern Time. And the the lighting and so forth going on, it's tricky to record this. It's dark outside and, you know, I don't have my my normal people that help me with all the audio and video. We have the studio when we record in California and uh, I've gotten very spoiled by all the, the nice stuff they do for me there. And I'm on my own here today and I got to run out the door because I'm going to be heading down to the CNBC studios at the NASDAQ market site on Times Square. I'm going to be appearing on CNBC here in a short while and then from there going on to work and entering combat. But I needed to get this recorded and and submitted before the day starts. So that's kind of why I'm recording here and when I'm recording uh, it is obviously not in the middle of the night um, in, in as far as the market goes. So I have no idea where things are going to end up going here on Thursday. Uh, as we sit here right now, futures are down a tiny bit. Um, and of course, we also don't know what will happen on Friday. But through Wednesday of this week, markets are once again up, have gone a long way towards recovering much of what the downside was throughout that horrific month of December. And uh, earnings season is just now getting started. A lot of the financial companies released earnings this week. And there was a pretty consistent theme that um, some of the, the proprietary trading, the fixed income trading units which are a more significant unit at some of the big mega banks than others, but across the board, all of them reporting a downtick as expected in, in that business silo for the month of December when capital markets were obviously uh, in a very bad way. Uh, but loan growth, deposit growth, investment banking, the financials have kind of kicked off this quarter with fourth quarter results better than expected, albeit from expectations that had been downticked quite a bit. So it is this first week is never the best week to get a gauge for how it appears earnings season is going to go. But I wouldn't say that anything looks awful at this point. It, it looks reasonably better than expected. And then we're going to go into a more normalized earnings week next week. More and more consumer staples companies start reporting, more industrials, and then between next week and the week after, you start getting a lot of the critical technology companies to report. So earnings season is, is a big deal for us at the Bonson Group in the sense that, first of all, we think it's just more important company activity, company guidance, company fundamentals um, matter to investors more than the macro headlines of the day, long-term company performance is all that stocks measure. Uh, and so when you are really driven by the Fed and by the Beltway or by macroeconomic announcements, it tends to be much more sentiment-oriented and, and it can kind of swing markets around one way or the other. Now, there's no question that when you look in, into the overall impact of, let's say, monetary policy and what the Federal Reserve is doing, that will affect overall valuation levels. Um, but what's interesting is investors spend so much time with that type of stuff, and it, it, there isn't a whole lot that can be done about it, where there's always things that can be done about company selection, the weightings of various pieces in your portfolio, and so er, just for bottom-up fundamentalist people like, like me, the earnings season is, is always a bit more interesting. Um, the, if you read Dividend Cafe this week, You'll notice a couple of different themes, you know, the negatives that could really harm markets this week. And I've reiterated this in our our big annual white paper that is at uh, marketepicurean.com. You know, there is the concern of the Fed constricting credit out of the economy to a degree, primarily via their um, quantitative tightening and, and the reduction of their own balance sheet to a way that it constricts credit into the corporate economy. And, and there is a concern that the trade war will worsen or not get better, uh, that will, it will take a turn somewhere in the midst of all of its own drama that is negatively received by market. And then that one or both of those things could in turn lead to a suppression of capital expenditures. 
And, and then I was asked this week, well, what's the positive for the year? And my answer is the positive is that those negatives don't play out. And I think that that really is kind of situation. If you take those negatives off the table and just look into the positive uh, direction of capital flows in the United States, especially um, relative to the, the uh, distress that exists in Europe right now and in China, uh, the fact of the matter is that we probably have an extremely positive flow into U.S. Uh, investment assets. You have earnings growth that will not be as fast paced as last year, but will still be comfortably double digits on the year, which is a meaningful increase in corporate profitability. Um, and then, of course, the economic backdrop, you have unemployment, you know, in the 3.7, 3.8% range, um, hundreds of thousands of unfilled jobs. Uh, and, and you have most aspects uh, that lead into GDP um, growth being very positive, real GDP net of inflation. And you have inflation that has thus far continued to be hyper contained. So my view is that um, the macro is all about those particular issues I've talked about for months now. And on a micro level, we're just sort of looking to see how the oil story continues to play out. Uh, how revenue growth plays into um, 2019 guidance, because if you end up having companies meet their profit expectation, but not necessarily only doing so because of margin expansion and not with some organic top line revenue, that opens up different you know questions we have to have about sustainability. So we, we feel like we have a pretty good understanding of where the macro backdrop is right now and what we're looking for in terms of micro stories that are investable. And uh, that's that's where things stand right now. Um, I've got to run, so I'm going to leave this one kind of short. Uh, but do uh, check out Dividend Cafe. It's one of the longer ones I've done quite some time. I had kind of a lot that inspired me this week. That happens a lot when I have an airplane flight out to New York. Um, and I will be looking forward to next week's Dividend Cafe. We have a couple of fun things in store with our Advice and Insights podcast next week. Um, and obviously, at our um, for for clients, our weekly portfolio holdings report, uh, we're starting to dig deep into the earnings season results. We'll be keeping you very posted there on individual uh, bottom up stock activity and things like that. We've uh, effectively rebalanced um, our entire client portfolios this week. It's a massive undertaking, trading hundreds of millions of dollars of um, stocks and bonds this week in terms of just sort of rebalancing to the target asset allocations. Uh, we do believe uh, systematically in rebalancing, and we happen to think this year that the timing of it was very appropriate. Uh, we continue our overweight theme into the alternative asset class with some caveats around how we're executing there, and as always, reach out with any questions and so forth. Uh, it's time to walk through the 27 degree temperatures of Midtown Manhattan. Have a wonderful weekend. Reach out if there's anything, anyone at the Bonson Group can do. We're here to answer your questions. Take care.